My name is Emilio Palomares. I'm IQ Research Professor since 2009 at ICIQ. Our group works in third generation photovoltaics based on very cheap semiconductor materials, organic materials and also perovskites. We are not only making devices, we are also trying to understand what limits the efficiency of these devices and for that reason we build up our own systems which are basically uh, time resolved systems like for example laser transient absorption spectroscopy. The group is formed by students, postdocs and technicians uh, and we have a range variety of uh, researchers from biologists to physicists to chemists, engineers, all of them are highly motivated to do new experimental research on this amazing field which is trying to harvest sunlight. Perovskite solar cells is a new type of materials that uh, was uh, discovered recently and a uh, hybrid material made uh, with uh, organic cations and inorganic uh, metal alloys. And uh, basically what uh, has been striking is that uh, they are very cheap and they are able to achieve efficiencies close to silicon solar cells. So 8 to 10 years ago this uh, material was basically used for thermoelectrics and everything that, have, that was tried to make solar cells they, they fail and since the discovery of this uh, hybrid mixture between organic and inorganic uh, there has been a tsunami in science and everybody is trying to, to study and understand uh, these this kind of, of materials. Uh, our main role working on perovskite solar cell is trying to understand the, what are the main losses at the solar cell and where the recombination is occurring, either at the perovskite or the contacts and for that we just dedicate a lot of uh, effort now in the team try to really uh, achieve uh, high efficiencies and when we have these cells understand why the efficiency is not uh, as good as it should be. Perovskite is a semiconductor material which has excellent photovoltaic properties. Um, the device that we fabricate here are uh, multi-structure, uh, multi-layer devices in which the perovskite is deposited between uh, a transparent contact and a metal contact, which are necessary to extract uh, the electrical current. Uh, the perovskite is deposited uh, starting from a, a precursor solution using thin film deposition technique like uh, spin coating. So the, the perovskite is deposited on the substrate and the formation of the film occurs with temperature. It's a, it's a kind of crystallization of, of the film and uh, this is clearly visible as the film changes color from uh, yellow to dark brown. The last step in the fabrication of perovskite solar cells is the deposition of the, of the metal contact. To do this, we use the thermal evaporator, another thin film deposition technique. To introduce the films in the chamber, we use a mask that has two functions. One supported the films in the evaporator, and the other function is to define the area of the final device. And we also introduce the metal that we want to evaporate. Then we close the chamber, and then we apply high vacuum. Finally, we obtain the final device that is ready to characterize. Also, we have uh, other activities which are uh, trying to push forward uh, biotechnology and apply uh, nanoscience to medicine. And for that, we have collaboration with several hospitals, including Partauli, which is one of the biggest hospitals studying cystic fibrosis. A few years ago, thanks to the ERC proof of concept project, we have developed a system which are based on quantum dots to detect uh, cystic fibrosis in, in humans. And, uh, hope that this will lead to a, to a very nice uh, result and hopefully a way to detect cystic fibrosis in humans very quickly. And as I said, uh, our main objectives for the next 5 to 10 years is try to, to develop further the interest in society for solar energy and to push very low cost materials that can be introduced to the market, uh, trying to decrease the CO2 levels uh, using renewable energy like, like solar cells. Mm -hmm.